Happy Cinco de Mayo, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host, Roland Fonta, here with Taking This Sports. Co-host is out on vacation, so you got me for the day. So, hey, nothing changes. Don't forget, we're not only the guys that watch these sports, but we analyze them. So today, we're actually going to cover the uh, Canelo Alvarez versus Daniel Jacobs fight, and we're going to cover the Fight Night 151 card of Donald Cerrone versus Al Iaquenta. So let's just get to it. We're going to cover the boxing fight first. That fight of, of Canelo Alvarez versus Danny Jacobs went to decision. It was a great fight. Canelo Alvarez started off by... By throwing a lot of body shots uh, er, early in the rounds, which is good. He utilizes it in, in, into his advantage, and he typically discourages fighters early in fights, so therefore they don't throw a lot of power shots. Uh, Daniel Jacobs came out throwing a lot of jabs, but was very tentative because Canelo not only has that power, he, he also utilizes that speed and is able to counter you very, very quickly. So Daniel Jacobs, in the beginning of the fight, again, utilized his jab. However, Canelo Alvarez had insane head movement. What makes him unique is the fact that he could evade these punches while still coming forward. Daniel Jacobs being the bigger guy in the ring, you would think he would push the pace. He would be the one stepping forward. Early in the fight, Canelo Alvarez being a smaller guy, he's the one coming forward, you know, initiating the, the, the action. Uh, later on um, in the fight, Canelo Alvarez is still landing uh, a lot of the cleaner blows. However, this does not mean that Daniel Jacobs was not winning rounds because I thought in the first uh, five rounds, Canelo was up three to two, which is fair because of the punch output that, that Daniel Jacobs was putting out there. Second half of the fight, Canelo Alvarez is slowing down, which means what? Less head movement, easier target to hit for Daniel Jacobs. Daniel Jacobs was trying to use that southpaw stance just to give Canelo something else to look at. However, when Daniel Jacobs was in the southpaw stance, it's not his regular stance. So therefore, um, his, his punch output would actually decrease uh, giving Canelo Alvarez the chance to push the push the pace and move forward. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about one round that impressed me by Daniel Jacobs, and also impressed me of Canelo Alvarez's ability to take a shot. Man, was that ninth round when when Daniel Jacobs switched to the southpaw stance and he actually clobbered him with a with a with a nasty left hook that would have put a lot of fighters out. I know Sergio Moore was discussing talking about that. Hey, that was the that was the punch that that dropped me. Canelo Alvarez shrugs it. Even his corner asked him after the round was over, hey, are you okay? You got hit with a big shot. Canelo, Canelo Alvarez just shrugged it because one thing that Canelo Alvarez can do when he fights is even if, even if he gets hit with a punch, he rolls with the punches so he doesn't get knocked out. He doesn't absorb the full contact of the punch. Um, and then uh, there was one thing I did not like about this fight, however, and it was actually the, the announcers. The announcers were all over Canelo Alvarez. They were not respecting uh, Daniel Jacobs' work throughout the fight. It's hard to go 12 rounds against Canelo. Look at the fighters that he's been fighting lately. Um, all of those guys have difficulties fighting him because of, like how I said, how strong, how fast he is, uh, how he moves his head, his footwork, everything all together. This is the reason why this guy, in my opinion, is the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in, in boxing right now. It, and is the face of boxing as well. Um, so, I, again, I didn't like how biased they were, you know, talking about how great Canelo was when Daniel Jacobs was also doing good work in there. Daniel Jacobs caught him a few times with a couple hooks. I didn't hear him call. I didn't hear them call, call that. So, uh, by, bad job by Kenny and, and Sergio Mora. There's one, one uh, specific uh, group of people that I will give credit to in a Canelo fight. And it's actually the judges for once. A lot of times, Canelo Alvarez will get the benefit of the doubt in, in a lot of rounds that, I, that I, in my opinion, he would lose. Just think about it, going back all, all the way to the Floyd Mayweather fight. He won one of those cards, and I don't think that he won a single round in that Floyd Mayweather fight. So imagine if the judges are willing to give him a card on, against Floyd Mayweather, arguably you know, the, the greatest fighter of this generation, he would definitely get it against anybody else. Uh, case in point, GGG on the first fight and GGG on the second fight. So I didn't think that Danny Jacobs uh, stood a chance. So when I heard the 115-113, 116-112 card, I was actually impressed that they for once called a great card there. So that wraps it up for the Canelo fight. I would love for him to fight let's say Billy Joe Saunders. I get it. He popped for PEDs. Who cares, right? Because at the end of the day, Canelo also popped for PED for eating tainted meat in Mexico. So, and, and nobody's talking about that. So let's go ahead and, and, and make that fight. I, I believe in my opinion, that's the best fight. 
Oscar De La Hoya is a smart man. He knows that Canelo has struggled against boxers. Case in point, Arizlani Lara and Austin Trout. Those are two guys that gave him problems, and obviously Floyd Mayweather. So that covers that there. Billy Joe Saunders, step up. I know Billy Joe wants this fight. Canelo, step up. Golden Boy, let's make this fight happen. So now we're going to move on to fight night 151, the Cowboy Cerrone fight against Al Iaquina. Al Iaquina came out the same way as usual, uh, uh, trying to uh, bull rush his way in, um, but it wasn't working. Clearly, the size and length and reach of Donald Cerrone gave uh, him a lot of trouble. Donald Cerrone was utilizing that jab beautifully uh, to keep him at bay. Um, there was a lot of times where Al Iaquina looked a little bit undisciplined. He was jumping with his hooks. It might work against a guy like Kevin Lee uh, that's, that's shorter and, and more eye level to him, but not against Donald Cerrone. Donald Cerrone, again, utilized that jab and utilized his leg kicks in the best way possible. Al Iaquina is a guy that's very front heavy um, when throwing his shots. A guy that's front heavy, chop that front leg, and you'll get his success. Uh, a turning point in that fight was actually in the first round that slowed down our Quince a little bit and got that got that nosebleed going was that knee um, that Cerrone landed when our Quinta was 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 trying to change that level again Cerrone's timing was amazing throughout this fight another part of this fight that 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 impressed me was being able to drop our Quinta with a jab you know like. Think about, uh, you know, the fighters. How many fighters have, have been able to say, hey, I, I've dropped a guy with a jab, and I get it, four-ounce gloves, doesn't matter. Awa Quinta has a great chin. The fact that he was able to drop him that way was incredible. Again, uh, stopped the momentum of, of Awa Quinta and also got that nosebleed even worse, which affects your breathing, and, and breathing is everything in these sports. You have a broken nose, it, it makes it extremely uncomfortable. You have your mouth wide open. That's a target that you get caught with your mouth open. You could go to sleep. Another another uh, shot that uh, Cerrone landed was that Anderson Silva to uh, Vitor Belfort front kick. That was incredible, too, that um, I, I, I Quinta did not get knocked out. He showed a lot of heart and, and a lot of chin, the ability to take those shots and still continue to push the pace and actually end up, um, you know, at, at the end of the fight, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Donald Cerrone got the decision, but again, I was also impressed that Al Iaquinta was able to finish that fight, taking all those shots. Wasn't able to do much. Again, Donald Cerrone being a veteran of the sport, another impressive victory for him. So that covers the Donald Cerrone and Al Iaquinta fight. Hey guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell button for more notifications. So we're going to continue with Fight Night 151, and actually, I'm going to go back to the Donna Cerrone and Al Iaquinta fight real quick. I didn't realize that Al Iaquinta was ranked so high in the lightweight division. He's actually ranked fourth, or was ranked fourth. So where does that put Donald Cerrone in the fourth spot? Do you know who is in the fifth spot right there? You know, you're talking about Kevin Lee and Justin Gaethje. So for Donald Cerrone, I would love to see him fight uh, Justin Gaethje or Kevin Lee. Preferably Kevin Lee, even though Kevin Lee has a fight coming up. So be it. Match them up so that way Al Iaquina could, could match up with somebody like Justin Gaethje. Uh, and moving on now, we're going to cover the Cub Swanson fight against uh, Burgos. Cub Swanson was there, and, and he was ranked 10 before this fight started. I actually like how Cub Swanson came out in this fight, came out aggressive. Typical Cub, Sw Cub Swanson, fast pace, and, and, and he was uh, accurate for a guy that loads so much on his punches. Um, Burgos came out and, and was utilizing that, that low inside leg kick. Um, it was effective. You can see that Cub Swanson's leg was taking a, a big beating in there. Um, so I thought that Cub, Cub Swanson actually took that first round. Second round, it was a similar situation where Cub Swanson was accurate, was coming forward. Uh, Burgos was also active. It, it was it was an entertaining fight in, in the fight stand uh, in a fan standpoint because the guys were 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 active in there. I just thought that Cub Swanson did a little bit more. However. What could have swayed the, 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 the judges' decisions was the fact that Burgos was actually finishing the round uh, stronger. Cub Swanson was starting each round at a high pace, was, was accurate, was moving forward. I thought that he would take the round, and then Burgos, I think he was stealing the rounds. Um, you could see it in the, in the third round as well. Cub Swanson, boom, goes there, gets the takedown, is doing good work on the cage. Uh, Burgos gets back up and, and actually ends the round. And if you, if you came in halfway in that fight, you wouldn't know that Cub Swanson did so well in this fight. It looked like Burgos dominated him because Cub Swanson looked a little gas uh, with the last 30 seconds of that fight. That being said, 
excuse me. I thought that uh that Cub Swanson did enough to win that fight. I had him winning two rounds to three, but they gave the decision to Burgos. Hey, it was a night of decision. There was 12 fights on that 151 card. Nine of them were decisions. So if you're one of those guys that or or, or ladies that were extremely bored and had nothing to do, you had a long night of UFC because that's a lot of minutes right there. Barely any knockouts. Like I said, another decision. Cub Swanson didn't get the nod in this fight, but he's still in tremendous condition and will continue moving forward. For Burgos, he beat a guy that was ranked 10th, so he's possibly in the top 10 right now. You know, getting a guy like, let's say, Josh Emmett or Jeremy Stevens would be a, a great fight. Moving forward, now that he fought Swanson, Everybody in the in the in the featherweight division in the top ten possesses power. I, I say maybe Oliveira is the only one that that doesn't really possess power like that. He's more of a submission guy, has the most submissions in in, in UFC history. But moving forward, Burgos has his hands full. If he struggled like th like this against Swanson, he he has a tough road going for him. But best of luck. So we're gonna move on to Til Til Dodo versus uh, Derek Brunson. Derek Brunson, I thought he was washed up. I'm not gonna lie. I, I saw his last couple fights. However, he did fight a lot of a lot of um, tough guys. But I thought Derek Brunson was on on the on the <clears throat> downfall of his career. You know, Till Dodo came in this fight 17 and two. Uh, you know, has had 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 a, a few impressive fights, but Derek Brunson in the first round uh, round instantly goes to his wrestling. He looked more more uh, uh, composed. You know, he wasn't rushing in. He was able to get that takedown. He did it smart. Uh, Till Dodo was actually throwing a lot of leg kicks and being very flashy. As soon as he gets caught, uh, as soon as Brunson gets caught with a leg kick, what does Brunson do? He wraps him around, gets that takedown, and instantly gets full mount, which would have been a, a dangerous situation, actually, for Teodoro, but he, he he played it safe. You know, he rolled on his back, which, again, is a, a difficult situation to be in, but he was able to get out of it. Again, Derek Brunson gets another full mount and wasn't able to uh, create a lot of damage, but, you know, he gets the round uh, for round one. Teodoro's second round, again, being extremely flashy, not really utilizing his hands, Got a lot of leg kicks, kicks to the body, kicks to the legs, um, a lot of spinning kicks that 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 weren't landing. But Brunson uh, was not active in that fight, was not able to get on the inside again. A more composed Derek Brunson, you know, it was a little bit different. So I was I was glad to see him that way. But I, in my opinion, he he uh, gave up that round. Third round, um, Derek Brunson. That that's the name that keeps coming up. He gets a massive, massive takedown that actually could have knocked out Todoro if he threw him, if he got it the right way. Uh, got him on the cage, lifted him up, went to the center of the octagon, and was able to get that takedown, which those that have never done this sport, man, you don't know. You get slammed like that, it takes a lot out of your cardio tank, you know? But um, <clears throat> Elias was tough, and he was able to continue um, uh, this fight. He was able to get up and keep moving forward. But... Overall, Derek Brunson gets four takedowns in this fight. I feel like he did a little bit more uh, to, to win this fight. And listen, props to, to Del Oro because a lot of times when the crowds boo, you get, out, get away from your game plan a lot. Derek Brunson was pushing the pace. He was the one moving forward. And, and, and Elias was actually uh, circling the ring, which is what you should do. That's the proper way of getting away fr from a cage. If Derek Brunson's not, not, not willing to engage in cutting off the ring, you circle around, get to the center of the octagon, and continue your work. So I'll give him props for that. In the sense of Derek Brunson... I don't know who he would be able to beat. Um, he was He's ranked ninth in, in, in the division. There's a lot, a lot of heat in that middleweight division. Um, so, honestly, I, I, would, I would fight somebody like I – don't, honestly, I don't even know because that fight was impressive for Brunson, but moving forward, like I said, it's going to be really, really tough for a man that's 36 years old. You know, he's trying to change, change the way that he fights, but all these guys have high volume, very powerful, and can push the pace. So for Derek Brunson, again, impressive win, but, you know, uh, um, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to be able to continue on, on the high road in the UFC. So right there, that actually wraps it up for Fight Night 151. Thank you for tuning in to Taking Dish Sports. Don't forget, we're not only the guys that watch these, these fights, but we analyze them. Here from your host, Raul Infante, and again, no co-host. So happy Cinco de Mayo, guys.